John Langan is a horror writer I have a lot of respect for. He's doing a lot of things other horror writers aren't, at least ones I'm familiar with. And whereas, whereas most horror writers are trying to create an atmosphere, scare you, one might say, right? Gross you out, all of the above. John Langan, he, he firmly roots his stories in the human condition, one might say. Um, most of his characters, if not all of his characters, have um, deep traumas, right? It's almost as if the story is a metaphor for what they're dealing with. And I know I'm not saying he's unique in that regard, but I find that in his work, it almost uh, crosses the literary boundary. And The Fisherman, the book I'm going to talk about today, is no different. But before I move on, I'd like to talk about two other reasons why I, I highly respect John Langan. And I'll be quick, I'll be quick. He experiments. He's very experimental. Um, his short story collection that I've read before this, uh, The Wide Carnivorous Sky and Other Monstrous Geographies, had such a vast array of different uh, storytelling techniques in it. And the last reason is um, he really gets Lovecraft. And I'll talk about more of this later in the review, but I feel like it's very applicable to this story. So what is the hook? What is The Fisherman about? It's about a man named Abe who has lost his wife shortly after their wedding to breast cancer. And after a bout with alcohol, he finds comfort in fishing. A coworker of his named Dan also suffers a tragedy and he thinks fishing might help him too. And Dan suggests a location he's never heard of. And during that trip, they meet a man who tells them the long and dark history of where they are headed, which turns out to be more than legend. So what did I think? Well, let us start with character. So this novel is told in first person POV. So we are given a very intimate portrait of Abe, our protagonist. Uh, John Langan definitely drags us across the coals. I think we get a very deep look at loss. I think we really understand Abe here. I also really appreciate the, uh, the kind of theme of Misery Loves Company because we know that Abe and his buddy Dan that we meet a little bit later in the novel, they both suffered a terrible loss. And in Dan's case, actually, plural, losses. But Abe finds that fishing uh, helps him and he's hoping to uh, bring Dan along on this journey and, and, and hopefully it will help him too. The problem is I just didn't get enough. I wanted more. And I know that's a funny thing to say because we are kind of given a lot. Like I said, this novel is very literary in nature. At least it starts off that way. There's no creepy stuff. Actually, there's one little creepy thing sort of in the first third, I guess, but that's it. It's, it's, it's mostly us hanging out with Abe and Dan and, and, and just feeling along with them. The middle third is a story told to us from a character in the book, but it's told to us as if somebody is telling us a story, if that makes sense. I'll get I'll get a little bit more into it later in the review. In the final third, we're back with Abe and Dan. So you can see two thirds of the novel involve our main characters, right? It's unfolding um, before our eyes in real time. And the middle third could almost be plucked out of this novel entirely in, in its own short story. But that said, even though we aren't with them for very long, or at least long enough for my taste, uh, the character work here is done very, very well. It, it, again, it's it's something that John Langan excels in. And, and I, I know he must have a love for literary fiction because he really brings it into his own writing. And, and he, to my knowledge, only writes speculative fiction or horror. Now, there's plenty of characters also in that middle third of the story that is not unfolding before our eyes, that is being told to us by a narrator, essentially. But the way it's told gives us too much narrative distance from my taste. And so I while the story was really cool, it was really interesting, it was really hard for me to fully invest myself into that tale because of that narrative distance. So Abe and Dan are, are heading uh, to some remote location, some strange location that Dan says he discovered in a book. They go to a restaurant and they meet the, the owner, I believe, his name's Howard, and he inquires as to where they're headed. And so they divulge that information and, and he knows, as in any great horror story, horror story right, he, he knows some deep, dark secrets, some eldritch tale, one might say. But right before we get into this middle third, right, when Howard starts telling us this story, uh, there's something funny that, that John Langan did where, where Abe mentions how incredible it was that Howard remembered so many details of the story because, again, it's a third of a novel. It's a very detailed story and it's told to us as if someone is telling us a story. So the story within the story is about the location they're planning to travel to, that being Abe and Dan. And it has a really dark history. There's some mysterious man who shows up in this town. He holds away in this house and just really odd things start happening. And some of the townspeople get swept up in this and are forced to confront, well, let's say ancient evils. Very Lovecraftian. And that's one thing I, I love about this book. John Langan gets Lovecraft. Lovecraft is not just about tentacles. It's not just about things that lurk in the night. It's not just about 
people summoning beings from different dimensions. Lovecraft to me is about scale. It's about our insignificance. It's about the unknown. As Lovecraft famously said in his essay, Supernatural Horror and Fiction, I believe. And this middle story, this middle story feels like a Lovecraft story, but it doesn't feel like John Lang was trying to copy Lovecraft, but he gets Lovecraft. It's inspired by Lovecraft. It's not just a story told on the surface of someone who, you know, read a few Lovecraft stories or saw Cthulhu or something like that and said, oh, I know Lovecraft. I'm going to write a Lovecraft story. This feels honestly like the core of what Lovecraft is trying to get across. But John Langan makes it his own. But the odd thing is the way it's told. So in most Lovecraft stories, we find ourselves being told the story from first person, being recounted. It's usually the person who has suffered something. Usually this person is at the very end of the, of the story. They're in a mental institution and recounting this all to us. Very few of Lovecraft's stories happen in real time. And so I, I wondered if that was kind of inspiration for the plot here. Because the way this middle story is written, as I said, I, I know I keep repeating myself, it's as if somebody is telling us a story, right? It's not as if it's unfolding before our eyes. It's not even told in first person, right? As if some crazy person in a mental institution is telling us this after the fact, because Howard did not experience this, right? This is like a local legend. And so while the content of that plot, of that story is so interesting, I, again, I feel like just the imagery that John Lingan creates, uh, the mood, the atmosphere, all of that is, is it's perfect. But, but I could never fully appreciate it because of the way it was told. In the final third of the plot, when we're back with uh, Aben and Dan, of course, uh, you know, their, their story weaves into this, this central idea, the central plot that, that Howard told us, but I'm not gonna spoil it for you. One more thing I'd like to talk about structure before I move on from the plot is that um, I wonder if this was just revealing John Langan's preferences or shortcomings as a writer. I hate to, I hate to use the word shortcomings, but we know that he primarily writes short stories. And because this 250-ish page novel is quite a bit longer than anything he's used to writing, it made me wonder, is that why he broke it up in such a way? Because I feel like you could take that central plot, a central story, tear it out of the novel, and put it on its own. Probably rewrite it in a more uh, palatable way, but still, it's a complete story right there. All right, well, let us talk about the writing itself, or as I like to call it, the cinematography of the novel. John Lang is a great writer. He's, uh, he's clear, he's concise, he's... Um, uh, conversational, uh, for, for lack of a better word. And maybe conversational is a good term for this particular novel because it is in first person, right? So it, it feels like someone is talking to us directly. The one interesting thing also about the writing here is um, I, I feel like I've read enough of his work to see uh, his style change. Not, not change so much, but he can kind of mold his style to fit what the story needs, if that makes sense. The first person narration at times did get a little tedious for me. It, it was always well written, but uh, I think just that POV, um, it, it lends itself to introspection, elaboration. I, I think anytime I've written that way too in first person, we get a little bit verbose. And, and so there were times where, where I felt like he was um, being a little self-indulgent, but maybe that was the character of Abe. Maybe that's what he wanted to do. And as I keep uh, repeating ad nauseum, uh, the writing style of the central story, while it did dip into, I think later in the, later in the story, it did dip into um, more of a style where it feels like more visual, right? Like, like, like this stuff is unfolding before our eyes versus uh, just being reported to us. But for the bulk of it, it was a little too dry for my taste. It was really difficult for me to get into, which is why I'm going to give The Fisherman by John Langan a 7 out of 10. A deeply personal story about a man suffering loss who also ventures into the horrors of the unknown. A story that eases you in in a literary fashion, but unfortunately marred by a very, very strange executional choice. And that is taking us out of the story, completely out of the story, to tell us another story Yes, tell us, not show us another story, which unfortunately provides too much narrative distance for my taste to such a degree where I don't feel like I fully felt the terror. But I think if you love literary fiction, if you love Lovecraft or you love horror in general, you're going to find something to like here. It's not perfect by any stretch, but again, like I said, I really love that he experiments, even with format, even if it's something I don't like, but like the format here. He experiments, he's always moving forward, he's always trying new things, and I can't say anything bad about that. Well, that is it for the review. I hope you enjoyed it. And let me know down below, have you read The Fisherman? Have you read any of his other works? Am I completely missing the point here? Is there something I missed? Or do you feel just like I do? And if you'd like to check out my own creative work, my own novels, you can find them in the description below. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.